everyone, welcome back to another daily edit video. Now for this video, I was just, I was very inspired. I watched Harry Makes It Up latest video that was called, I, I mean, I made notes. How to curate the ultimate makeup bag, my formula. Fewer products, endless possibilities. Oh, that title sung to me, the thumbnail sung to me, and the video was so darn, number one, informative, but also just relaxing to watch. It really felt like makeup ASMR, and it was just lovely. I really, really enjoyed it. So I watched that video, I made notes, and I have made a little capsule makeup bag of my own and I thought I would talk you through what made the car and also just Harry's philosophy. I thought it was really interesting. It's very inclusive. Ultimately, whatever your makeup tastes are, it feels like this technique can be tailored by everyone to make the perfect makeup bag for you. She was very much more focused on the how and the why rather than the products. Although we do actually have quite a lot of favorite products in common. There's definitely going to be some that she used in that video that I'm using here. Um, but yeah, I thought I would talk you through what is inside. So the bag itself, this is the Glossier beauty bag that I've become a little bit obsessed with. It's great. It really fits everything. You could fit the kitchen sink in here. There are pockets galore. There you go. A little sneak peek. <laughs> but let's get started with the category that Harry called makeup underwear. She said, these are your prep pieces. Let me consult my notes. Things that you use every day, they frame your look and they're essential for the basics to work well. So that includes things like primer, foundation, concealer, a lip balm, just things that you go for all the time without even thinking whatever look you're doing, you're going to use these pieces in some way, shape or form. I don't think Harry actually mentioned a primer or used a primer, but if I was going to go for that step, an obvious inclusion would be the Glossier Future Dew Oil Serum Hybrid. I mean, it's brilliant. And in my eyes, a really good multitasker as well. Harry was talking in the video all about highlighters that can double up as eye glosses and balms. And I feel like this product does do that. You can apply it just on the high points of your face. You could apply it all over as a primer. You can use it as a bit of a mixing medium. You could mix it with your foundation. And I mean, I have mentioned this so many times, so I'm going to leave it there. But basically, whatever primer you fancy, or if you don't use primer, just leave it out. But for me, pretty much whatever look I'm doing, it, it includes this. I can't remember what foundation she used, but we have a very similar taste in foundation. And actually, this was quite hard to pick one foundation, like you're really trying to condense things down, a foundation that could work for being a wedding guest, you know, more of a full coverage, something that's going to last quite a long time compared to just like an everyday slap it on tinted moisturizer. I, I love a foundation. I love a tinted moisturizer. It's easily the part of my routine that I find the most difficult to condense down. But when I was really thinking about it, I thought, what is a foundation that can kind of tick all the boxes for me, and I think it's this, the Giorgio Armani Neo Nude True to Skin Natural Glow Foundation. I have the shade 3.5 and also the shade 4.5. Every time I go back to this, I just really, really like it. It was, it was very, very close between this and the MAC face and body, I have to say. I've been fake tanning a lot recently, so I'm definitely gonna use a little bit more 4.5 than I am 3.5 today, and I'm just gonna take a really tiny amount, like a really, really, really small amount, and blend that all over with my fingers. And just taking that more on the center of my face where it needs a little bit more evening out. If I come close, hopefully you can see that just completely melts into the skin. It is such a lovely finish. Winter, summer, any time of the year, I really, truly love this foundation. Harry then mentioned a concealer, and I mean, a concealer is just something that I reach for most days. Even if I'm having a no makeup makeup day, I would go for a concealer, and like her, I like something that brightens under the eyes. But I was thinking of something that brightens under the eyes, but also could cover redness and blemishes for me. And that is obviously not the RMS Beauty Uncover Up Concealer or the Glossier Stretch Concealer which are really my two favorite concealers. They're not 
as multitasking, although they can be used in more of a tinted moisturizer all over kind of way, they haven't got the coverage where they can be multitasking and actually diminish the look of blemishes or evening out redness. Like they're not the best for that. And I, I accept that. So actually I've gone for the same one that Harry used in that video and it's the Dior Forever Skin Correct. This is in the shade 2N. I'm just really feeling this concealer at the moment. And I love that I can use it under the eyes on redness around the nose and then any scarring or like active breakouts that I have. And like she mentioned, I've been using this on days when I haven't been wearing foundation and you just wanna, you know, blend a little bit of concealer where you need it. It's so nice and fresh. I just feel like the combination of those base products can really work in so many different ways and I can dial it up and dial it down, which is what Harry was mentioning in that video. She also mentioned a bronzer, obviously go for a powder if that's what you like, but if you're more of a cream person, I really love the Fenty Beauty. I'm, I'm not even sure I can show you this because it's so gross inside, but the Fenty Beauty Cheeks Out Bronzer in the shade Butter Biscuit. I just love a cream bronzer, I feel that they diffuse so beautifully onto the skin. And like Harry said, you could always use it as an eyeshadow as well. You can add dimension to the face, depending on what sort of tone that you use. I don't personally contour all that often, so I sort of use it as a bit of a two-in-one. But there are loads of shades available in this, so there's gonna be something for everyone. It feels like it just warms things up nicely. Bronzer is one of the most important parts of my makeup underwear, that is for sure. There are a few more products I would consider part of my makeup underwear, and one would be brows. Um, I don't tend to fill my brows in because they're just huge, like my father's, but I do enjoy the It Cosmetics Brow Power. It's a really nice gray-toned product, so I enjoy that. It doesn't feel too warm or too obvious in the brows. If you're a brunette, I'd say this is a really good shout. Also doubles up as a really nice freckle maker if you want to add some freckles on your nose again it's got that sort of tone that doesn't make it look too obvious and it's also a really nice size just for popping on a couple of freckles now i'm just adding freckles <laughs> and just blending them out with your finger but to set them nothing beats the refi brow sculpt i saw someone the other day she had incredible eyebrows, I was like, excuse me, what are you using in your incredible eyebrows? And of course, it was it was this. I was like, I knew it. <laughs> it's the best gel. I take a small amount and then use a toothbrush to uh, blend it in. But obviously, you might use a pomade, you might use eyeshadows, you might use a tinted gel. Whatever you use, just whatever you love. Makes your brows feel fab, you feel fab. A lip balm. I mean, I've got this ridiculously bougie Augustinus Bader one. I was sent it, I'm using it up, it's lovely. But in my eyes, Nivea works just as well. Like Harry, I would always put a lip balm on before I sort of started my makeup so that they were nice and moisturized for whatever I was gonna use later on. And then Harry didn't mention this, but I really love an eyeshadow primer. And because we're talking more about prep products, we're talking about the underwear, the real true essentials that you use kind of every day, I would put an eyeshadow primer in my stash personally, and it's the NARS Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that and then just blend it out over my eyelids with a brush. So that's my makeup underwear on. I mean, in a way, this is a very sort of no makeup makeup. You could just throw on a bit of mascara if that's what you fancied and like be done. I would quite happily just wear this for the rest of the day. But the next category are your staples. Now, Harry says these are your ride or die comfort zone products. Maybe they're a similar color palette or texture. You just feel good in them and they can just add a bit of polish to your look. So I guess what she's trying to say there is it's more your color palette. Like what are you doing to put a bit of oomph back into your complexion, on your eyes, on your cheeks, on your lips. I have, I have lots of things here. <laughs> For eyes, I have a few things and they definitely are very much part of the same uh, color family, but also slightly different textures. Um, so I quite like having a mix depending on, some days I fancy a powder eyeshadow, some days I fancy a cream. Obviously, if I fancy a cream and probably my most used eye product of the last practically two years is the Giorgio Armani Eye Tint in the shade 23. It's fab. You've seen me wear this many, many, many times. It's just 
a delightful product and I just smear it on, <laughs> smear is such a horrible word, use my little buffing brush and I can apply this in a matter of a minute, I would say. And also I don't tend to use a primer with this. It hangs around quite well on its own, but it doesn't dry out the lids. It's perfect. I've also been giving the Violet underscore FR. Uh, this is the eye paint, the matte liquid eyeshadow and liner in the shade Caramel Should. Um, I've been giving this a go and really enjoying it. Why oh, can't even get it open? <laughs> Just like the Armani, it comes with a doe fit. You can see the difference in color though. The Armani is much more cooler and it's much more sheer on the lid, whereas this is actually very, very pigmented and much more orangey, that terracotta, deep, rusty finish, but really, really fun to play with. And then, do you sense a theme? <laughs> My MAC Quad eyeshadow palette. I, I have forgotten completely what all of these eyeshadows are. I have a feeling this is MAC Sober. I have a feeling this is a limited edition MAC one. Not sure, not sure. <laughs> I know that one of them is Anastasia Beverly Hills Caramel, but I don't wanna get it wrong. I will link down below for you. I think I've actually got a blog post where I talk about all these four eyeshadows. They're basically my four most used warm brown eyeshadows. And I think today I'm gonna to go for one of these. I might go for this one. I will write in the description box what shade it is. But I just love creating your own eyeshadow palette. There are so many eyeshadow palettes out there. Some of them are huge. They're difficult to store. I don't find myself using them, you know, as often as I should. So why not just decant your faves into a little palette, make your own. So although these shades are very similar, definitely a part of the same color family, it is nice to mix it up with textures because, you know, some days you just want to mix it up a little bit. For cheeks, I actually have been enjoying a bit more blush recently. I know. Um, but I really do enjoy a cream blush. I love the Vive um, powder blushes. They're beautiful. But I have been trying the Hourglass Vanish Blush Sticks. This is in the shade Loyal. You can see it's quite a brownie pink shade and I'm just going to take a little bit of this on my fingers and then just dab it along mm, cheekbones, non-existent cheekbones, but trying to keep the application quite high and not bring the cheeks down. Kind of makes it look a bit more, a bit more fresh, a bit more summery. A little bit on the end of the nose as well. The good thing with a cream cheek product is quite often you can then also just add it on the eyes if that's what you want, on the lips. It's very multi tasking that's why i love a cream product they're just very easy to use and ultimately you can use them for so many things so you're reducing down the makeup bag like harry said fewer products endless possibilities <laughs> for lips i have four products but again i'm going for that whole similar color family but different texture kind of thing so if i want just a glossy sheer wash of color i use the rowan liquid lip balm in the shade remy this is always in my stash i use this is probably my most used color lip product aside from lip balm i use this the most often i think harry used this in the video as well if i want something that's a bit more in between maybe it's got a little bit more pigment but it still has that sheer shiny finish i really have been enjoying the glossier ultra lip in the shade trench oh it's basically cake, but with a little bit more shine. And then maybe my favorite lipstick is the, the Posh lipstick from Victoria Beckham Beauty. And this is in the shade Girl. I'm gonna wear this today. It's just, oh, lovely. It's got a bit more pigment to it than everything else that I've mentioned, but it still is so comfortable on the lips. Like I'm just not a fan of anything that is too heavy, too obvious. It still looks like a very natural, I just have lip balm on kind of thing. So they're all very similar shade wise, but they've just got slightly different finishes. And then I have got a lip liner. It's the KKW Beauty Lip Liner in the shade Nude 05. It swatches a little something like that. And I can always just add that around the edges if I want a bit more definition. Fun fact, this is the only lip liner that I own. <laughs> Done. Harry did mention highlighter. Obviously I would go for a cream or a balm highlighter. She recommends that because you can use it as an eye gloss. You can use it to add a gloss to your lip. Obviously you can use it as a highlighter. Um, I really love the Vive uh, Ju Ju Skin 
Dew Skin? <laughs> you know the one that I mean, or just any of like the balm highlighters that I love, but I feel like if you've got Future Dew, you don't really need it because you could just use a tiny little bit of Future Dew on the tops of your cheeks to add a bit of highlight to your cheeks or highlight wherever you want really. So for me, this is my multitasking highlight product. And then obviously your mascara. I am, I'm really back into this. The Lancome Miss Your Big Mascara, but it would be a very close call between this and the Giorgio Armani Eyes to Kill Wet for me, but just whatever your favorite mascara is, throw it in. Something that is separating and lifting and lengthening, but that you could always add a bit of volume with as well. Like, that's why I love this one. And then onto the final category, which Harry says is the wild card category. And these are the pieces of your routine that you can think of as your occasion wear. They're your little black dress, you feel great in them. It really elevates your staples. Maybe it's something you're experimenting with. Maybe it's a trend. Maybe it's just like a slightly different hue of something that you don't normally wear or a different texture. Just something to like mix it up a bit. Harry loves glitter. She loves a colorful liner. Um, or maybe that's, maybe that's your staples. Maybe that's like your everyday and actually the neutrals are your wild card. Like whatever it is that you just feel a little bit like, oh, just, finishes off the look. It's like the cherry on the top, something to play with. That is the wild card for you. So I have a couple of recommendations for myself. <laughs> I haven't included any eyeliners anywhere else in this because for me, an eyeliner is definitely something that is a wild card. It's not an everyday thing. And I have two from Victoria Beckham Beauty. I really love these, the Satin Kajal Liners. I have the shade Coco and also the shade Bordeaux. Coco is a very deep brown. It's basically almost a black. And then Bordeaux is this lovely wine shade. I personally like to wear them just on the outer corners of the eye and then just smudged out. They've got a smudger on the end or you can just smudge them out with a brush. Um, or just to like beef up the lash line. I really love Bordeaux with a warm camel eyeshadow. It just looks really nice. Lip product wise, I have two additional little pieces. The Laura Mercier, this is the Velour Extreme Matte Lipstick in the shade Vibe. This is just more if I wanna feel like I'm wearing a lipstick. It's this shade here. It's very summery, a lovely pinky coral shade. It's a matte lipstick, so it's very buildable. I could put it over a lip balm and it would sort of look really sheer, or I could, I, I'm gonna put it on now. Or you can wear it a little bit more opaquely. <laughs> Is that a word? I just really love this color. I think it's very summery and fun, and I sort of always go back to it and can just never get rid of it out of my routine. And then I have the Lisa Eldridge lipstick in the shade Velvet Morning. This is the one red that I currently own. It's an orangey, fiery, vibrant red, and I just love having it in my routine, just in case I'm ever in the mood. Then we were talking about palettes earlier, and I just really recommend making up your own one of colors that you love if you can't find a palette that you thoroughly enjoy kind of all the shades of. But one that I thoroughly do enjoy all the shades of, I'm pretty sure I did a video, a week of wearing this eyeshadow palette. I'm pretty sure I did. I'll link that up in the corner for you. It's the NARS Afterglow eyeshadow palette and it's just really fun. You've got some mattes in there, you've got some shimmers in there, you've got some glitters in there. It's a really fun palette to have in your stash. I love this orange glitter. I love this pink. I just, I just really enjoy it. Although this was annoyingly limited edition, I don't think you can find this anymore. They have bought out the Summer Solstice eyeshadow palette. And if you look at them next to each other, you can definitely see some similarities. I know it hasn't got that orange and it hasn't got that pink and they're like the fun colors, um, but there's definitely some good ones to play around with in there. And with those glitters, you could always just pick a little bit up on your finger, add a little bit on top of whatever eyeshadow you're wearing, make them into a liner. Um, it, just, it just feels like a really versatile palette for me. But that is the finished look, and these are all the items I would include in my capsule makeup bag. Thank you so much to Harry for the inspiration for this video. I highly recommend you watch that video just, just for something relaxing and peaceful to watch. She has such a lovely channel. She is full to the brim with information, and I just absolutely love her stuff, and I found that video really, really helpful, and hopefully, 
this has helped you too. You might have some new product recommendations or maybe you guessed every single thing that was already in there. Thank you so much for watching. Everything I've mentioned will be linked down below for you and I will see you tomorrow at 9am for another daily edit. I'll see you then. Bye.